Jeez. Your boy Shane Sobers, man. Hey, Joshua Bowatsi. Very, very. You know what? Um, just for Saturday, Birmingham. Inactive for 12 months. Rated number 12, I think it is, on the IBF. His opponent, rated number 6 on the IBF. If Bowatsi wins, he should go above the number 6 component opponent and end up number 4 at least. Here we are in the future, Bowatsi wins. Here we are in the future, we have many haters. The comments are just flying through the roof. Boring fight. He should have been aggressive. He's not hungry anymore. He doesn't want it. He should have stuck with Eddie Hearn. I switched off my TV. Hey, you see me? Here's my personal opinion. I'm very, very, very impressed with what I saw with Joshua Boatsi um, on Saturday night. Um, the thing is, the thing about boxing, yeah, like right now you've got 18 year olds that's just starting off their professional career. They're hungry, they're aggressive. And then you've got 38 year olds just at the end point of their career. There's two different entity in regards to power, in regards to experience, in regards to who's more durable, who is not. Um, so when you're overall looking at this sport, you got to think. You got to think about it from a longevity perspective. Um, and 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 for me, that's why I'm particularly impressed with what I saw with Joshua Bawatsi on Saturday because. You see, as fans, they just wanna, they just wanna just see aggression. They wanna see knockouts. They wanna see, and I respect it. I get it. You see what I'm saying? People are, are, are boxing is boxing. It's a fight. You're in a theater. You see what I'm saying? You gotta be aggressive. You gotta do what you gotta do. Um, but you have to also think longevity in your career. What is gonna work? Um. One of, one of the analogy used is, is the blender. When Joshua Boatsy has got you in a blender, that is just you and him. It's a madness. Everyone in the boxing scene, in the British scene, knows that if Boatsy has got you in a blender, it's peak. Yeah? But ultimately, for me, and seeing the years, I've, I've, I've followed Josh's career, from since his amateur days um, to, to where he is now. And one of my main concerns is that Boatsi is a very aggressive fighter. He's very in there. And for me, it's not a long lasting. Your body's not, you know what I mean? Your body puts on miles. You have to think about longevity. You gotta think about when you fight them 18 year olds, them younger, more aggressive. And, and for me, you've got a display that you can box and most importantly that you can fight and for me as one of the critics from the other end one of my concerns originally was that this guy is aggressive he goes in there he gets the job done but long term i'm not seeing boxing so i'm not too sure and here we are in this side of the the coin where actually i'm impressed that he outboxed the opponent the most important people on the fight is, in the fight, sorry, is the people around the ring. The judges, yeah, he won every round. The fans might not be happy, more to fight. You see what I'm saying? But from a growth perspective, you see me, I would like to see that at least another two fights. And I understand the critics are gonna hate that, 
they're gonna dislike that. They don't wanna watch another two more of Joshua Boazzi on the outside, looking like he's having a sparring match. These time the guy's rated number four on the IBF. They don't wanna see that. They don't care about that. Who is this guy? You see what I'm saying? But for someone that actually feels that this guy is actually one of the best boxers in the world, yeah, again, it's my opinion. It is what it is. Um, for me, I'm happy to see that he can outbox. He can he can box in there. He jabbed. For everyone, it looked like a sparring match. And that's beauty right there. So... We want the old, Bo we, we want the old Boatsy back, but I'm I'm prepared to be patient. I want to see at least another two more boxing, and then I want to see the mixture now, the blender, yeah, and the boxer. And for me, gone clear. World champion, Bivol gets it, Baturbiev gets it, Anthony Yard, <laughs> yeah. But again, obviously, the critics love Anthony Yard. But it is what it is. The other, the other perspective with boxing right now is you have to look at it from a ranking. Who's a WBC champion? Let's talk about. Let's talk about Bivol. So Bivol, I'm sure he's got a fight soon. Yeah, Canelo fought last night as well. Um, so on the balance of probability now, I'm, 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 Canelo has made it clear that he would like to rematch with Bivol. So, on the balance of probability, Bawatsi is not going to be in a position to fight Bivol this year. Bivol's going to take Canelo any day over anyone else. Let's move on from Bivol. Baturbiev. Now, the wonderful thing about Baturbiev, I think Baturbiev is ready to fight anyone. <laughs> anyone and everyone. But the other side to it is, he's the WBC champion, I think. So, I think within that now, but Terbia, if he's got to fight whoever's mandatory, I don't even know who's mandatory. But I don't think Bawatsi's put himself in a in a mandatory position right now. So you can you can argue that Baturbiev is potentially out. But out of the three names for me, Baturbiev is probably the most likely because I just think his mentality and the fact that he he he, he would take the fight if there's no mandatory in the way that he has to absolutely do. Um, Anthony Yards, it's not even worth having that conversation in my humble opinion because I, as much as I would love to see the fight because Anthony Yard versus Boatsy, Boatsy's taking man out, the end. It's no, no joke thing, it's not no boxing thing, it's a fight. He's going to knock man out, we already know what time it is. You're not going to see no boxing match with that, it's a knockout, end of. Anthony Yard knows it, and but let's look at the politics now. Firstly, you got Sky Sports, you got BT Sports. Already drama, drama. The only good thing that I can see with that, it's not Frank Warren versus um, Eddie Hearn anymore. Yeah, it's Ben Shalom, Frank Warren. Can they make it happen? I don't know. Maybe the, the relationship's a new thing, so maybe. Who knows? But it's just who's going to be able to, what, what platform is it going to be on? Always the problem with Frank Warren and or BT Sport and Sky Sports. Um, moving on from that now, Anthony Yards. Anthony Yard, you can now argue he's just a glorified journeyman right now. And rightfully, respectfully. But the other side to it is he's coming off at what? At least two, three loss? Is Anthony Yard gonna take a high risk fight like Bawatsi when he needs a few more wins to, to hype himself back up? He wants to box another bum, at least another two more fights to get himself back into the to the flow of things, getting people excited. But you think he's gonna take a Bawatsi fight now, given that he's he's lost the Bivol recently? He's 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 off at least two losses at the moment. So I don't think that Anthony Yard's gonna take that fight. Which then let's talk about the critics. The critics, unfortunately, in a light heavyweight division right now. Only wants to see Bawatsi versus Bivol, Bawatsi versus Baturbia, Bawatsi versus Anthony Yard. And now you've got Dan Aziz in the mix, which can, can happen, but I don't want to see that fight. I want to see the top three. You see what I'm saying? But if that's what it is, then that's what it is. You see what I'm saying? I rate Dan. You see what I'm saying? But for me, no, I don't want to see that fight. But 
anyone else that you put in from in front of Bawatsi right now, people are gonna keep chatting. They're gonna chat the same thing over and over again. And for me, it is what it is. Bawatsi just needs to realize that he is his own brand. Yeah, his vision is where he is now. He knows where he needs to be. He knows between himself and his team what he's building. And, and, and that's it. The most important thing is the people around the ring because when it gets to high level boxing, it's not just gonna be jumping there and knock man out sometimes. It's gonna be, you have to box and you need to have the confidence internally to know that you can do both. You see what I'm saying? So ultimately, I'm, I'm happy at the growth. But I see don't need to get himself caught up in, in all the world politics with, with all the other stuff. What he needs to do is remain relevant have a good promoter. The promoter at the moment for me is, is is also part of the problem because one thing about Eddie Hearn that he did, Eddie was very, very good at defending and promoting his fighters. You got Ben Shulam at the moment, he's quite new in the scene. He's not he's not he's not a talker like that. He's not you see what I'm saying? He's 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 building himself, he's building a brand. The next issue that you then have, match room show versus boxer show now for me i was actually quite impressed with um the show on saturday with boxer they roll out the red carpet for boatsy and that's very very impressive understanding who he is um and the potential of of where he can be in the next five to ten years he's still got years left in his career there's no rush but what he needs to do is just remain active um but for me the the, the, the wider problem for me is, is, is Sky Sports, man. I'm going to say it because there's just a lot going on with Sky Sports at the moment. The energy, the people that they have there. Like, I'm just not... And I think before I was quite tolerant with it because Eddie, 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 Eddie made it a... Eddie made it entertainment. You see what I'm saying? Matchroom Show made it. You see what I'm saying? But now, you need the commentators. You need good... You don't want the, the, the certain people that's just trying to kickstart their career or think that they know boxing and it's just yeah man like these are oh, Love Island I don't, it's just I, I could I could go in but I'm gonna try and keep it professional you see what I'm saying but Sky Sports definitely needs to do better man with the people that they have commentating on these shows the MCs on these shows um, and and I think but at the same time you also got to give them a chance to build because They've just lost the contract there with Matchroom. Matchroom's around the world. Look at the look at the level of boxing that they just put on on the weekend there with Canelo. You had the whole of Mexico came out. The atmosphere, the vibes, it was just outstanding. You see what I'm saying? Um, but at the same time, British boxing have to have to hype up and stop running to these American and, and actually start hyping up these British fighters. Look at the whole of Mexico came out for Canelo. And stop with this whole MMA and boxing. No one cares. MMA is MMA, boxing is boxing. You see what I'm saying? Two different entities, man. We don't care about that. But the other side to it is, is, is understanding is a new world. And yeah, I can go in all day. But more of the story. Going back to Joshua Bawatsi. But this is also all about. And my message to Bawatsi is keep doing what you're doing. I'd like to see. As the critics say, sparring match. I'd like to see some two more sparring match. They, they're going to hate, man. They're going to hate. They can maybe tolerate with one more. You see what I'm saying? But two more for me would be beautiful. And then after that, yes, Bawatsi, bring back the blender. Anyone that wants to jump in the blender, take them out. And then after you then taking them out, get back to your boxing. You're in control. It's your career, it's your brand, and yeah, man, just just have the right people around you, promoting you, building you, and it's a reset. But at the end of the day, for me, you're on the right path, man, and I'm happy. Don't watch the comments; they're gonna chat and chat and chat. And the other side to it is you got Whitaker. Absolutely hate the guy. I'm, I, I can't stand the guy. 
I refuse to buy a ticket for the guy. I refuse to watch him. You see him, he's just acting, just, just, just clowning. Right? You see that, that. But then you look in the comments, and the people they want to be like, yeah, next Nassim, yeah, oh. And then you got the haters that, that, that like myself, yeah. Who is? I hate the guy. You see what I'm saying? So you, you, you have, you have two different entities even there, but. For me, I've decided internally. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I don't even, I'm not watching a Whitaker fight. If anything, I'm watching him when he's against someone decent, just to see his ass get knocked out. So maybe he's doing a fantastic thing for people like myself. You see what I'm saying? But someone like him, and this is why you can't watch the critics because, for me, I love boxing, and what Whitaker is doing at the moment doesn't represent the boxing that I like. You see what I'm saying? Doesn't represent the character that I like. He's fake. That's my humble opinion. But the other side to it is people love it. People like it. They want to see another Prince Nassim. There's only one Prince Nassim. That's it. The end. No one else. Everyone else is fake after that. There's only one Chris Eubank. The end. When you're even getting compared to people, it's a problem. There's only one of them. There's no other Chris Eubank. That's the end for me today, people.